the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. And I think we got it. I think we do. And uh, we're going to go ahead and just get the uh, started this week. Hey, you know, I was telling everybody, I was talking to people, and what, what I wanted to, to talk about this Sunday, you know, last Sunday we really was getting into uh, the root cause of, of, of hate. Uh, wars and conflicts and, and when you think about it you know I said it was uh, money uh, resources and power that that drives people to conflict right I mean you even look at it when you talk about the the gangs and um, the drug war members the 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 people that sit there and uh, push drugs in the neighborhood, and then and then and, and and then kill one another, force people to 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 be in gangs and and, and uh, shoot up houses. I mean, go. I mean, hey, look, shoot up houses with no care whatsoever of who's inside the house. I mean, get to that point, right? And, and that's been going on for quite a while. Uh, that needs to be something that you ask yourself, how is it that uh, a generation of children uh, has turned on one another, you know, uh, and, and not care about the collateral damages that happens. And then I looked at the, the other piece is the general adult society uh different ethnic groups and in this case we talk about the uh uh Fazi, the we talk we break it into categories in, in our country uh, uh ethnic groups uh you got you got the uh you got african americans you got the european americans uh, you got Hispanics groups that consolidates based on language, not based on countries of origin. But you have that. Uh, you got people fighting over based on skin colors, you know. Uh, and you sit there and you say, man, how does that square with the gospel, even when people, I'm talking about the fact is that there's a lot of people, now not the, and not so much of the gang members, but the, all those ethnic groups have, they're professing themselves as, as believers in Christianity. That's the only group I can really speak to concerning the word of God. Uh, Everybody else just just ride with me because I think the, the issue that most people look at is what 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 uh <laughs> what is a Christian right and and what really is not so much now to term it just to say what is a Christian what does a Christian a believer recognize and uh, you know the people the way uh, you can talk those who have been born again uh, just in case some play the game well they were called Christian what are they they're the people of the way they are the children of God uh, so if they are the children of God you know because that's the thing about it say if you be in Christ and what what I'm trying to say is for all of us you know when I said the Bible the Bible said and we'll get to those scriptures that the tree is known by its fruit do you not understand it's not so much just that if you know by your fruit what are the implications if you are a corrupt fruit if you are a good fruit let's 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 talk about that i think that's let's focus on the fact is 
what is the ultimate goal and objective when you say that you are a Christian? I, I just want you to make sure all of us, for the world to know and understand, because I think that's important for the world to know. Because as we let our light shine, if we let our light shine, we're having other people come to the light, come to the glory, come to the understanding, but come to what? Not only, and this is what I think is critical and I think sometimes it's missing, is not only focusing on the life here. Cause you know, in John 10, 10, the scripture said that the thief comes, and that's talking about Satan, come to steal, kill, and to, to, and to destroy. But Christ come to give life and life more abundantly. So if, if that is the case, and Christ is talking to give life more abundantly, and it's not just talking about here, but it's also it's talking about the eternal life, right? Because that's what Christ, that's what we're saying is that if we profess ourselves a Christian, we profess ourselves to have eternal life, not eternal death. So see, see what I'm saying is that there's, there's more to just saying what I am. There's this saying is that how do I get eternal life? And in and, and John 14, 6, Christ said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Come to the Father of what? Not just in this lifetime, but eternity. And we talked about scripture, the saying is that in the, before the throne of God, those are coming from the great tribulation, which nobody, I don't think people understand, you don't want to go through the great tribulation, but it looked like a lot of them plan on trying to go that way based on their actions, based on their perception, based on how they did. I'm concerned about how many people are going to eternal death and still try to profess themselves to be Christians. And, and I need, we need to go, let's, we need to break down that if your goal is eternal life, then you need to go the way that Christ told us to go. And his way is not only in the sweet by and by, but here now, because the tree is known by its fruit. That's what's important for all of us to understand. And, and we're gonna talk about that today. That, you know, what does it, what, what you know, when the great, rich young ruler said, what do I need to do to inherit, inherit eternal life? You need to understand, based on the fact that he's called a rich ruler, his fact is that his current living financially is pretty good. He has the resources that he needs to eat, to sleep, not only just at the basic level, but at the, at the luxury level. He, he has resources. He has, when we talk about power, but he was asking Christ about the eternal life. And isn't that something that Christ gave an answer to him, but also he gave an answer to us. That if we seek him and become who he wants us to be and to learn to be conformed to what he wants us to be conformed to, then, then we have eternal life. And maybe that's important for us to understand is the eternal life isn't what your goal and objective should be, eternal life. And I'm just, I'm just, the, the subject going to be talking about the fact is that, or at least it's going to be getting around it, is why do we believe that it is better to pretend to be something or associate ourselves with something that re akins to corrupt fruit? and still expect eternal life? Or do we even, do some people even expect eternal life? And maybe that's what we need to, to get into. Do people who have moved into this, this, this desire to hurt people, I'm talking about hurt people. I'm talking about this, this, uh, the, 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 I'm talking about from ostracizing, condemning, uh, shaming, uh, showing all bad nasty fruit and then say they got eternal life 
Or are you really telling me you don't really care about eternal life? That's I just want to know. When you do the things and we talk about the history, and we're not the, we, let's talk about the history of the ministry itself and the 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 atrocities that occurred in the men in the church ministry. Because not the church itself. I'm convinced of that. But I'm convinced that the the corruption, the the directions that people have put in on other people from oppressing people or shaming people angry that you know I talk about think about like in the civil rights movement and after the civil war and, and then prior to the civil war and the crusades and and all those type of things and 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 and, and, and even when we're talking about when they're talking to the school integration and, and the people was like Ugh! you don't come in here and have a, a passion for it and there's some people that have a passion for it even today and some of them have changed and and, and they, they, they put people in the in, in uh in a bucket and sit there and say i hate those people and if you are if you look like me then and, and, you, and you you act like those people and, and look at i don't know what you mean act like those people we're talking about like a progressive movement, right? We're talking about the liberal movement, right? And then you're talking about the conservative movement. <laughs> and then you got one group is actually professing to want to go back. You know, like when they said it was a make America great again, you got to ask yourself, great for who? Great for who? And if it's not great for the body of Christ, and that greatness is to show the love and the light of Christ. If it shows great again to, to hurt and lynch and beat and, and, and torment people, it's, it's, it's showing the, the things that the Pharisees did during the time of Christ. The same people who sit there and, 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 and say, Hosanna, Hosanna, and then say, crucify him. Those, are we, are we, do we, some of us even recognize that some of us are just like the Pharisees and the Sadducees? Do, do we recognize that we turn in so many people off by playing these they fall into these buckets of, 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 of political ideologies that really is only fall into the buckets <laughs> of, of, of the hate and everything else that was before. See, I don't know if you recognize it. You know, when you think about the, the caste system, when you think about the slave trade, when you think about the Jim Crow laws, when you think about World War One, World War Two, and all the other wars in between, the, the Mexican War, the Indian War, when we think about coming into well, this country, just like any other country, colonizations in Africa and all those things, taking possessions, taking resources, enslaving people, oppressing people, and, and yet say you're a Christian. And someone said, do it in the name of God. I'm looking at articles not see look it is not to think about this some people sit there say those are the things of the past i'm talking about things of the day too i recently read an article where a judge would sit there and and uh encouraging to to arrest young african americans and and she said she's doing it doing the work of god i i think i think a lot of cases I think some people have really been deceived in doing, understanding what the works of God is, the work of Christ. Christ said, I came to do, I came, he came to do work. He came to serve. 
You got people going in there talking about uh, we want to hate you. We want to oppress you. We want to put you in jail. We, we want to could condemn an entire race. There's some people that sit there and want to treat genocide. Oh, and then sit there and say, I'm, I'm a Christian. And y'all got to sit there and say, I'm telling I'm telling you right now. Either you want eternal life or you want death, eternal death. That's what the, we're going to talk about today. What do you want? Do you want eternal life? or eternal death? Are you content with your hate and your shaming and everything else <clears throat> just to, 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 to fall in condemnation? You know, I, I, I just really need to know. So one of the things is we look at the title, then we go into the Lord's Prayer. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Uh, here it is right here. Let's share this. I, I was sitting there. <clears throat> and, and and the title is talking about teaching the gospel Yeshua's way. And those of you who don't know what Yeshua means, it, it's the Hebrew name for Jesus. Um, in Jesus' name itself is a transliteration. It, 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 it progresses and changed that name uh, over a period of time. Uh, from the Latin word to to English translation, and the really English trans translation for Yeshua is Joshua, uh, but uh, languages, international languages, and so forth, Latin and so forth, finally decided to make Christ the our Savior. Uh, trans transliteration, meaning it's not even the exact translation to Jesus. Okay, and uh, that that's that's why I said teaching Yeshua's way, meaning when when he walked this earth as a Hebrew, you know the Hebrews, and they, I can't I can't speak Hebrew language, but he that's what he heard was Yeshua. Okay, I just just want to make sure you understand that. Uh, but the teaching way, teach the gospel. Yeshua's way is this question here is, is that he or the statement he that loves not does not know God for God is love and we'll get to that scripture that talks about it in first John chapter 4 but the, the, the question is he that loves not and that's the point, see, because, see, love, I guarantee you, love does not mean to uh, hurt people, oppress people, shame people. It, 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 Christ, if we're going to do it Christ's way, remember John 14, 6 said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but me. Where did you, if you're going to do it Jesus' way, not, not your, your church ministry, your church doctrine, your church dogma, Jesus' way. Excuse me. When did Jesus? When did you see? I'm talking about. I'm talking about Yeshua. I'm talking about Jesus. You professing that we're professing that we're talking about as our Savior. When did you see Jesus go after anybody that operated in the word "quote unquote" sinners? When did you see Jesus go after sinners? Did, what, when did you get that? Uh, uh, but that's the title there. You know, he that loves not knows not God. Because because I, I I've been going over this over and over again. I've been trying to understand how is it you 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 do opposite of Christ. I'm, I'm talking about some of you. I, I, you know we're not talking about all of you. Because some of you actually are the church. But I'm talking about those who profess to be the church, but don't do it Yeshua's way. John 14, 6 says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. So therefore, we're supposed to do things Yeshua's way. 
there's many people that sit there and want to do it, raise raise people from the dead. There's people want to lay hands in the sick and they recover. They want to, they want to cast out demons. They want to do those great things, but they want to do the things not how Christ approached people. Because remember, Christ died. He said, "I came. I died for the God. I came not to die, but I came for the ungodly." He came for the ungodly to help them and point them in the way of eternal life. What was his approach? How did he approach the ungodly? Who did he have more conversations or confrontations with? Those who professed that they were godly. And yet it seemed that our society has moved to this pattern of behavior. We, if you think about it, anytime you curse somebody out or get angry with somebody or put somebody down because of the color of the skin, well, I don't care whether you're black or white or whatever, but you do those things, not showing love, but showing hate, not showing unity, but showing division. You, you're not, then that means that you're not doing it his will you're doing it your will you think it's all right to hurt people you think it's all right to shame people you think it's all right to oppress people you think it's all right to kick people out and yet you're professing to be a christian and yet christ said i came to save the ungodly and yet many of you knowing the lies and deceptions we talked about that just last week about the fact is this color matter. Obviously, it matters to somebody. It matters to a group of people that sit there and want to say, I'm, a, I'm going to paint the picture of, 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 of the Christ that looked like me and say the Bible said that we were created in the image of God. And yet, people think that the image of God is based on the exterior opposed to the interior of the heart. You are a spirit. John 4, 24, I know you. I, I, maybe I'll sit there and try to pop it over the screen for you. But you are a spirit. John 4, 24 just said, God is a spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. I'm going to put, I'm, you know, when I do the editing and put this up, I'm, I think I put that little slide up there for you. See it? God is the spirit. So when they talk about we made it an image of God, we're not talking about the outward appearance. And stop trying to make people ministers. You know better. You're supposed to sit there and give people understanding that you made an image of God is by your spirit. Bible said that God judges the heart. The heart is the spirit. And so he's going to look at your heart. And we need to sit there and prepare people to do the things that need to be done based on the word of God, based on the will of God, based on the character and nature of God. Christ came to save the ungodly. Now, if you don't want to be a believer, stop. Oh, we, I think all of that is just stop trying to stop professing yourself as a Christian. Just go ahead and just say you're not a Christian. Go ahead and say you're, I don't care, I don't care if you, you can call yourself a, a racist. I don't care if you want to call yourself a, a, a thief, a liar, a murderer. Because what it gets me is you have people have the audacity to label people so that they can sit there now do things to them. They did that for, I'm going to let you know something too. This ain't new. They did that for Christ too. They used that to kill Christ. They used little titles of that deceiver, that sinner, that uh, wine bibbler. They did that. I, maybe you didn't get, maybe you didn't catch that when you was reading the scriptures because maybe you don't, some of you don't even read the scriptures. You need to read it. All of us need to read it. The Bible said, instead of show yourself approved to God. And my point is that when people demonize people based on the color of skin, based on their ethnic groups, based on their, where they came from, I, whatever, the, whatever those people may be, 
their culture, their traditions, or whatever, and you demonize it, and yet you call yourself a Christian, I'm going to tell you something. You are deceiving yourself. And that's the scripture we're going to talk about today. You are deceiving you. You are deceiving yourself, trying to put. And I don't care if you're sitting there trying. Well, I, I want to deceive. I want to be that wolf in sheep clothing, so that I can enjoy whatever you think you're enjoying in your life. <laughs> you, 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 you want to pretend to be a Christian knowing that you have eternal death. Is that what you're telling me? Because it, it, it got to be. Because I talked to my mom the other day. She said, they know what they're doing. And if you know what you're doing, think about it. Because you know, Christ was crucified on the cross. And those those Sadducees and Pharisees and anybody else that was agreeing with them and, and was mocking him on the cross. And Christ sat there and said, Father, forget him for they know not what they do. My question is, do you know what you're doing? Do you know that you are heading toward destruction because you sit there and found that it is better not to love somebody that you considered a sinner, opposed to the fact is that you're supposed to love a sinner? You don't. Nobody asks you. You don't give a darn. Nobody asks you. You to say you agree with the sin. That, that, that is that is so. Did Christ say he agreed when he said God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son? That whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That means that he agreed with the sin. When Christ said I came to save the ungodly, did he say I was agreeing with their ungodly behavior? No. He was sitting there saying this, despite their ungodly behavior, despite your ungodly behavior, I have opened the door for you through repentance to enter into the kingdom. And how dare some of us sit there and say we have repented and then sit there and demonize people, sit there and hurt people. And I'm talking about the people all the way from the slave trade all the way to now. Who sat there and do the same thing that the Sadducees and Pharisees and the scribes did and the lawyers did during Jesus' time or Yeshua's time? Sat there, stoned, how quick the woman caught in the act of the daughter, how quick the, the, the very sinners professing themselves to be, be, be the children of God and, and getting ready to stone a child of God because she was caught in the act of adultery. And yet every last one of them were sinners as well. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.